Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Linus has been complaining that his Tycho brand gyroscope has been behaving oddly for weeks. When Werner finally took a look, he found some strange magnetic fields were affecting the gyroscope. It seemed to be coming from somewhere north of the KSC. We've dubbed it the Typo Tycho Magnetic Anomaly (TMA). Check it out and see what's there. So, this appears to be some kind of structure just north of the KSC. So, I'm going to take this contract. Um, I've also queued up a fair other ones. Um, I've got, um, well, these are going to be cash ones. I'm not going to show you. I will be showing you the low resolution scan of the moon. That should be interesting in a future episode. Um, I've also picked up a couple VIP ferry ones, which we're going to do. There's an equatorial satellite one. I'm going to pick up for some extra cash. And here's an interesting one. They're asking us to reposition contracts at one. Um, turns out they don't actually want us to move it very far, just change the inclination and change the periapsis, but you've seen me position a satellite in an orbit, you don't need to see me do that again. But, let's go and have a look at this TMA. Um, and I think that might be it. I don't quite know why they need me to go and have a look at it, it really is just over there. So let's go to the space plane hangar. And build something to go and have a look at it. I don't need KSPpedia. Um, I wanted to turn that contract thing on. Alright, open. What have we got that's lurking in here that might be... Oh, the science bug. Let's delete that, whatever it is. It's apparently we don't have the parts for it anymore. Load up the science bug. Oh, it's a science bug. It's got 40,000 delta V because it's air breathing science on the side of it. Do we have any more science? No, but I could, um, <laughs> radar on Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Let's strap that on the side of it. Um, let's, we will strap, um, that on the other side, just so I have some more information about what's going on. All right, since this is a magnetic anomaly, we should not send a pilot, nor should we send a tourist. Uh, let's send an engineer, no, a scientist, since it's the science bug. Actually, actually, save, leave. We've got a fair chunk of cash. Astronaut complex. NG. Courage and stupidity. What a set of pilots, engineers. And what did a new scientist? Seafull and Kerbath. Bobster. <laughs> nice. Bobster. Um. Alright, let's recruit you. Enlist Kerbal. Wow. No idea how much that cost, I wasn't paying attention. Seafull Kerbal, available for next mission. Well, C4 Kerbal. I pushed the wrong button. Sorry, C4. We're going to take you to the space plane hangar. We're going to stick you in the science bug. Crew. Welcome aboard. It occurs to me I really should send Bill and Bob into orbit. Just so they got they level up a little bit. But anyway, C4. Launch. So. Really? Alright. Keep, keep. Uh, let's turn the brakes on, shall we? Dot. No, that's time warp. What was the brakes? B? B. No, you toggle it to get it to work. Uh, U. EVA. While you're out here, collect data, remove, restore, collect data, remove, restore, store experiments, you can get back in. Turn the brakes off. Alright, activate navigation. Two kilometers away. We're going to try and avoid Seafall going too quickly. 
because this thing is as stable as a bucket of bees. Yeah, yeah, that is pretty much what I expected to happen. That was indeed about as stable as a bucket of bees. Let's go back to the space plane hangar. Um, do we have any better wheels? No, we don't. I suppose one thing we could do to try and improve the stability would be a couple things. Firstly, I take that off and add a probe core on the back then technically I can control it from here and it'll give me some more reaction wheels. The other thing I can do is aerodynamics. If we put wings on it. <laughs> Why? Well because they'll keep it stable. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know it's not the brightest idea I've ever had but They will keep it stable. Might lift, but you never know. I'm not intending to go quickly enough for it to lift. And the idea is that it will just. Oh, actually, I don't want winglets. I want basic fins because they're much tidier. Basically, behind these things is they should just add a whole extra set of layers of stability. Just a little bit more aerodynamic stability. Just a little bit. Not much. Just a little bit. Just to make it so that the thing isn't quite so god awful. It hopefully, will not just flip itself the hell out quite so much. Alright, let's try and gauge that. Roughly about there. Alright, Cyborg 1A. Saves. Crew. Zeefal. Try again, Zeefal. Launch. So, Zeefal's just gonna sit in the seat. And we are going to control from there. Which means we can turn the SAS on. We're gonna roll this way a bit. Fire the engine. Much, much lower than last time. Right, now we're moving. We'll kill the engine. Let it spin down. Gently come down these. I realize that I could really widen the wheelbase on this thing, actually. If, right, if we screw up again, I will widen the wheelbase. Beep, beep to you too. All right, and activate navigation. Less than a minute. Excellent. This is a huge, great big obelisk has suddenly appeared. That's an entirely useful marker. That is. That really tells me what I need to know. All right. So having the this unit do SAS is helping. We appear to be still accelerating, even though we are. That'll do. I mean, it's not bad. All right, chatter, beeps. I don't want any beeps. Oh, keep that for a moment then, and we'll do a mystery group observation while we're right here. Keep that for a moment. Whoa! Ah, um, kill the thrust and break. Ah. There we go. All right. Vessel type EVA. All right then. Um. No, no. All right. Can I 
Yeah, shut that down. There we go. All right. C4. Get out. Collect. Remove. Restore. Collect. Restore. Store experiments. Lego. Squad. Well, it's a monolith. Imagine, rise in our backyard and we never saw it. Maybe we had some windows in the administration building. Yes, Jim. Yes, Gene. Yes, indeed. Well, look at the size of you. You feeling any more smarter, Seafall? You feeling better? You feeling more, I don't know, anything? Team Any Investigation. Ooh, so that got us three grand. Invented orbit of the moon. Yay! Alright, so let's get you back in there and let's get you away from this thing because it's clearly dangerous. Clearly, clearly dangerous. And we'll find you somewhere safer. Alright. Well, I think we're a bit far away from getting any of those places. Well, let's get back in at least. Oops. <laughs> That's nice. Get it. Bash your head, why don't you? bashed your head again, didn't you? Can you actually get in? Alright, so you can reach it. Oh, grab. Nice. And then board. Nice. Alright, you're back aboard the science bug. Well, it didn't take too very long to get here, did it? Alright, with that in mind then. Recover the science bug which performed science near the monolith. Creepy, creepy monolith. 7.4 science. 700 odd science. Eh? Yep, we got all of our parts back. And Seafall is ready for a new assignment. Seafall got contract ribbon. Completing any significant contract. EVA ribbon. Well done, Seafall. Well done indeed. Nice. <laughs> Mauler. Lots of stupidity, no courage. And I just love her name. Welcome aboard, Mauler. And we need an NG. So, as much as I like the idea of Bobster, I'm probably going to hire Asdin. Oh, I'm out of capacity. Fair enough. Too lost, I'm afraid. So, the astronaut complex. Five keeper Kerbals can only be disembarked from Kerbin. Can perform EVAs. Oh, in space! Oh, right! Ah, that's interesting. So what I could probably do in that case is my plan for... Oh, leveling up some of my crew can involve that then. Well, hmm. Only halfway through the episode. Um, let's upgrade that. What's the advantage of upgrading this thing? Oh, strategies and commitment. Fair enough. Science and R&D. Let's see what we've got. Miniaturization. Adapters. Stack Serapers docking ports. Space exploration. Hitchhiker can. Better wheels. Flight control. Better winglets. And an inline reaction wheel. That was something I was missing. Mark II crew cabin. Struts. Fuselage. Bigger Diapler, bigger adapter, launch things. Big rockets, huge engines. Propulsion systems, tiny engines. Fuel systems, more fuel tanks. All right. And you are heat shields, landing struts, bigger parachute. Oh, and the plane landing gear. What do we want? We've got 300 science. Um... All right, let's take the crew cabin and purchase those parts. Let's take the little... Actually, what is it we really want? I don't really fuss about you. 
the reaction will be nice, given that we're having some problems turning things around. Advanced flight control. Ah! There's the lander can. And there's RCS. Ooh. I'm really tempted by the RCS, but... The hitchhiker can. I think it's a larger one. The bigger wheels wouldn't be too bad. I'm not too fussed about the miniaturization. Advanced construction. That's fairings. Ooh. So many interesting things. Let's get the bigger fuel tanks. Well, that's expensive. Um, and... Big rockets, little rockets. Big rockets or little rockets. Well, if we're thinking about going to the moon, which is where I think we're going, I think I'll probably want some landing legs. Yes. Thank you. Alright, so, contracts. Oh, wow. A load of uh, TMAs have suddenly appeared. After visiting the Taika Minute oh, Day, since TMO Zero, a load more have suddenly appeared. Ooh, interesting. Where are these then? Apparently, there's something out in Kerbin mm -hmm. Desert as well. Alright, let's go to the tracking station. So we've got a monolith out there, a monolith down over here, the one out in the pyramids, and one over here. Well, that one's not technically that far away. <laughs> Leave facility. Space plane hangar. One of these planes. Uh, no, we don't want the science bug. Let's try... Explorer W2. Wow, you look like you might have a lot of thrust. I don't necessarily need that much thrust. Um, what's the Explorer 3 look like? Alright, I quite like that. I'll give you. But. Uh, not Domdin, I will need a pilot. Um, but Mauler, you're up. But I would like to... What's my part count? Ah, 29 of 30. Alright, fair enough. Looks like we won't be bringing any science to the mountains. Um, Alright, let's just take this... this craft. Right, let's just double check, where's the... Center of mass is in front of the center of lift. I mean she'll nose down. Alright. Open. Explorer 1A. Load. Oh, you actually do have some scientific information on the board. Close. Alright, you look like you've got a bit more parachute, so I think you'll be a bit more stable. Is it nose down I want, or is it nose up I want? Do I just want them? Whoops. Fine, I'll launch it and then we'll find out how badly it's designed. Not Dondin, Mauler. Say launch. Did I take the contract? Space Center. I'll leave her on the runway. She'll be fine. Contract. Alright. Tracking station. Which one's the one that's nearby? TMA1. Right. <laughs> Mission Control, TMA-1, yes. 
Leave facility. Explorer 1, fly. Alright, let's um, close that, shall we? Nice. Alright. So this has not gone to a great start since I wasn't paying a great deal of attention. Can we rotate yet? <laughs> Revert flight to launch. And let's get the navigation sorted out before I try going down the runway, shall we? Right. Test the Weasley turbofan engine. That's a Juno. We'll sort that out later. Close. And... Alright, so... We needed to go to the Space Center. We need to accept the contract for TMA-1. Uh -huh. Which we've apparently done. Visit TMA-1. Alright. Didn't need to worry about that then. Fly. Then we need to go to the map. Lock that as navigation. And then we need to turn the SAS on. Yep, yep, I know Mauler. The strange image of after effects you have of suddenly being convinced that you were um, crashing hideously, having knocked one of your engines off. I have no idea where that came from. Up. Up, please. Thank you! Alright, so it is stable. Alright, let's get some altitude before I try doing any maneuvers. Because this thing is stable, but stable like a very blunt brick. Alright, I might be able to pull out of this. Yes, alright, well that was a way of turning round. I'm not sure necessarily know if it's one that I liked, but it succeeded. All right, so we got. Let's gain a bit more altitude. They're normally a surveyor group, so we need to EVA near that. So it's out of interest. These engines. It's interesting to know what kind of altitude they can actually work at because they are pretty simple little engines. And they do eventually kind of cap out, I think. The thrust is actually starting to go down as we're going faster. I suspect this was mostly going higher. Still, our time to get there is still decreasing bit by bit. You know what? You don't really need to watch me sit here for five minutes. I'll bring you back when we're closer. So we're back over the mountains, the highlands, quite near Kerbal Space Center. You can see Space Center is off in the distance over there. We are cruising at just under 606 kilometers above the mountains. Not though, as you might say, we're above sea level. I'm not necessarily has to be that far above the mountains. And we're coming up on our target. I've just throttled down with the intent on slowing us down as we get closer. Um, I was monitoring the intakes, but yeah, apparently these things don't need to worry too much about that. I have popped this up, flying high over Cover Mountain, so just bringing us around. Over the target. Now, my intention is to land as close as I possibly can. 
plane is salvageable, then so be it. Um, and then Mauler will more than likely walk the remainder of the distance close enough. Now we need to get quite close for the pop-up to occur, which is fine, it's fine. Um, looks like we don't need to worry too much about the temperature scan. Alright, we'll keep that apparently if we managed to miss one while flying low. So it appears that the object is just on the other side of this ridge. I don't want to end up going down the meter, so kill the engine and pop the parachutes. And do a really nasty flare. Essentially flip the plane out, and now we are landing. Slowly, but we're landing. And the SA is off and just let the plane rest. Alright, I have no idea how far we are above the actual ground. Apparently we are... The time is doing weird things here as we're slowing in various different ways. Apparently it'll take us an hour to get there at this current rate. Because we are a kilometre above, I'm assuming it means we're a kilometre up. I didn't bring... Um, I didn't bring an engineering unit to give me information on actually where we are. Might as well grab one of those as well. Alright. I am entirely expecting that we are going to lose parts of the plane in this case. We are landing pretty slowly. My intent is to at least try and land in such a state that we won't be plummeting immediately, but we are on quite a mountainside. Hopefully getting this angle. Nice. Alright, brakes off. Brakes on. Cut. 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 Right, give me full throttle, just so I've got some control, and then bring it down. Right, this is quite steep. And we're still 700 meters away. Looks like we did come down the wrong side of this slope. However. We are beginning to accelerate as the engines spin up and get some traction. Alright, let's uh, flatten the slope of it a little bit. We'll try going alongside it. Come on. Come on. I know this angle is frankly ridiculous, but in this plane should have the thrust. To get us over this ridge. Oh. And the brakes on. Brakes on. That's why we weren't going anywhere. I had the brakes on. But it looks like we do actually need the brakes on to make sure we're not falling backwards, because unless we're at full thrust. Right, we're pushing forward really quite intently on the thing, and I realize I didn't necessarily need to. Good job we brought plenty of fuel. Just 
closer to her as soon as we go over this ridge. Alright, what do we lose? All manner of thrust. Alright, but we are up over the edge. Which means I should now be able to get Dondin, or Mauler, sorry. Out. You alright? Yeah, you're good. Alright, so is it going to be a 13 minute walk? Probably less once we start tumbling down the slope. So I'll bring you back when we're closer. So we're getting a bit closer now. I've been using time warp. I've got a message has popped up saying that we've discovered a strange monolith. Um, we're still a fair bit away from it, um, but I wanted to bring you back after a short little hop. Um, because the slope is so steep that the poor girl, that our poor pilot here, sorry, um, keeps falling over when I try and time it. Yeah, I imagine you have bashed in these a bit better. But it looks like we can do at least a double speed. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that. That was not a good idea on my part. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Alright, triple speed. So we're getting there at least. We'll find out a bit more about this monolith. The other monoliths are going to take a bit more work to go out and get because they are much further away. Um, so I will probably try some kind of flight to get some of them. Um, but the nature of the distance means I will probably be using a bigger plane, which I will be designing and then talking about when you meet me mid flight when we go and have a look at those. But I think before we go to the moon, we should really spend a bit of time and pay more attention to what's actually around us. So, this monolith appears to be mostly just sticking out the ground, so it's just over there. So I'm slightly concerned that when we get to that edge, we might end up flying off it at a bit of a rate. This is, of course, entirely normal walking. All kerbals walk like this. Jittery, 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 jittery. Come on. It's got to be close enough yet. Alright, that's less jittery if I walk a slightly sideways. And I am not going to time warp over this ridge. It looks distressingly steep. You're going to make me walk down there, aren't you? You're going to make me walk down there. Alright. Keep pushing that button. I am just going to send a helicopter out for you. We have these things. Why we don't never worry about doing it? Well, I'm assuming that what they have is a helicopter. It's some kind of strange device. It's like, what do you need? Well, we need to go get the helicopter. That's thing. You never actually tell how long it takes them to get back from these various places. I'm assuming most of they just go for a very long walk. The model looks like it was recently dug up. Okay. Thank you, Mauler. There we go. Signal into space. Triangulate as many monoliths as possible. Grand. Recover. <laughs> Let's get you back to space. Back to the space uh, centre, shall we, Mauler? There we go. Didn't gain much science. Well, we gained one bit of data gather. You gained a little bit of XP. You got EVA ribbon, mountain ribbon, G-force collision ribbon. I'm assuming that's when you landed at some point. And if I'm not wrong, we have the Explorer 1 debris, which we will recover and gather us a little bit of science and a bit of cash. All right, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That was TMA 1. Um, that was a pair of monoliths we have just since discovered. So we've got another one all the way down over here, one over there, another one over here, and the space center's here. Oh, Explorer 1. 
recover. Yes. So that was a bit of debris from Explorer 1, is actually what I clicked on. Alright, fine. So we gathered a little bit more science, recovered 12,000 parts. So yeah, Space Center is over here. We've got a pyramid. Team A1, Team A2, 3, and 4. Not in any of that remote in that order. But we've got to go and have a look at. So I will probably be make that one episode that will have an awful lot of recording for me. I'm sitting around waiting. And not an awful lot for you. Um, but we'll sort that out later. Bye for now. I've been the Marmoset. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And particularly to comment greatly about the fact that I was worried about how slow we're going up the hill when I had the brakes on. Bye for now.